Whoa, that looks like the perfect storm headed our way. Huh? Those huge dark clouds headed this way, and all that lightning? Man, that looks like the perfect storm. Where? Right there, coming this way. It takes up the whole sky. Looks scary. It looks like the perfect storm, buddy. I don't see it. He doesn't mean perfect storm, John. He means big storm. Oh, that. Hey, Circle. Glad you could join us today. We really enjoy having you here. You know, beginning a life with someone who has autism isn't easy. Especially when you have no experience with autism to reference. I mean, just the acronyms alone are enough to make your head spin. It goes something like this. The GP referred us to the CMHC to see the PhD in order to administer the MASI to John. The PhD gave a DX of ASD, ADHD, ODD, and SPD based upon the DSM-5. Of course, in the DSM-4, the DX would have been ASP and not ASD. They suggested we consider ABA or CBT and also recommended an ST evaluation, followed up, of course, by a visit to the LCSW for some family therapy. Now, his MSW is working with him on his ADLs, but he still hasn't grasped the concept of picking up after himself, which is sending my own OCD into overdrive. Can you relate? Now, add in the fact that autistic thinking naturally seems foreign to a neurotypical person, it's no wonder I had so many fails early on. I still love you. Thanks, buddy. In the early part of the relationship, I'm not sure which challenge was bigger for Bella. Keeping up with John or coaching me? You're still my biggest challenge, <laughs> dork. I've made so many mistakes over the years. I mean, it's a wonder Bella hasn't sent John and I both packing. So today, I thought I'd share with you some of my finer moments. But first, just a small disclaimer. Warning. The following program contains graphic scenes of stupidity performed by one man who thought he knew best. It was my first time watching John while Bella was gone. That's a scary way to start a story. I'd say it was somewhere close to a year into our relationship, and Bella had gotten called into work on a Saturday. She was only going to be gone for a couple of hours, so we decided I would stay with John. <laughs> what could go wrong? Now this was right before Christmas, and out in the garage was an unwrapped gift for John. This was the gift of all gifts. The Lego set he had been dying for. And of course he found it. Now I definitely wasn't going to be the one to ruin a surprise for him. So I told him it was a gift for his four-year-old nephew. Um, his nephew who was the arch nemesis at that time because he was the baby of the family? Yeah, that didn't go over too well. Thirteen calls to his mom and two meltdowns later... I realized this wasn't going to be as easy as I had thought. Speaking of the arch nemesis, his nephew, he was over at the house one Wednesday. Now, Wednesdays are a big deal for John and I. They're what we call our Man Day. Just so you know, nothing's allowed to happen on Man Day unless preordained by the boss. That would be John. I couldn't very well just ignore the four-year-old, so I tried to include him in what we were doing. Needless to say, this did not make the boss happy. So how did I fix the issue? I told John that if he couldn't be nice, I'd just play with his nephew. That's right. Just take the root cause of a meltdown, completely disregard it, and then try reasoning your way out of it. I found the sign on his door afterwards. That's my boy. Early on in our relationship, I occasionally had issues communicating with John. I would sometimes say things that he didn't understand. Now, I've never claimed to be the brightest guy in the world, so when he would say, huh? I would simply repeat myself slower and louder. This usually happened three or four times before Bella would reword it for me. Now, you would think I would catch on after this happening several times. Nope, it took me about a year. Then there was the time I had a cold. John asked if he could have a drink of my tea and I told him no. I told him that I was sick and might be contagious so he probably shouldn't drink after me. Now, he didn't know what contagious meant so I explained it to him. Oh boy, that set off a panic that lasted over a week and nearly turned into a phobia. Several years later, he still asks me if I'm contagious every time I cough or sneeze. Oh, John. Of course, not all my screw-ups were due to a lack of understanding about autism. Sometimes I knew better and did it anyways. One time my truck was in the shop and he wanted to go kayaking. With no way of transporting the kayaks, I told him no. Now, I'm a softy at heart and I hate telling John no. And John, let's just say that John can be persistent. So you guessed it, we went kayaking. 
This meant we carried two kayaks a half mile to the river, then we kayaked half the distance we would normally go before turning around just to row all the way back. Seven hours of self-induced torture. We got back well after dark, starving, and still had to carry our kayaks a half mile back to the house. I'm pretty sure we both had a meltdown that day. And I can't leave out the time he agreed to let me teach him to drive. We live out in the country and we're just about a half mile from home. No traffic, no stop signs, no kids. Simply a straight shot home, then a turn into the drive. A turn that almost took out the mailbox! He told his mom I used the F word. Come on now, John. He didn't use the F word. Yes, I did. Several times. The mailbox is only standing because God himself moved it. I know he had to have hit it and wiped it out. My favorite and most memorable fail of all time, though, happened shortly before we moved in together. We were to the point where I was staying with Bella and John pretty much every weekend. And, of course, on... Man Day! I started leaving notes for John on Monday mornings before I left. Simple notes, like how much fun I had over the weekend, or be good for your mom this week. Can't wait to see you Wednesday. After a few weeks of doing this, he asked his mom if I would please stop leaving him notes. You see, one of his brothers lives out of state and mails him notes. Notes mean you're not coming home. That's my boy. Years have gone by now, and I still make mistakes, and I still continuously learn more and more about John. What works, what doesn't. Sometimes my mistakes are from lack of understanding. Other times they're just not preventable, and, yeah, there are times when I should have, and probably did, know better. Sounds a lot like raising any other kid, doesn't it? The differences are less than others would guess, and more than they'll ever know. So who's ready for a question of the week? How do you describe your child to others in two sentences or less? Leave your answer in the comment section below, and we'll share them next week. Never forget to live in faith and not in fear, especially when things get tough. See you next week, Circle. Bye!